Hi, welcome to Notes from the Field, the Garden Continuum's video blog. I'm Monique Gallen, and today we're going to talk about deadheading. So what exactly is deadheading? It has nothing to do with the Grateful Dead, but it is an important part of ornamental gardening. We're in my pollinator garden, and this I feel like is a perfect place to explain deadheading. So first of all, all the plants that you see around me here are angiosperms. Angiosperms are plants that live and sustain life through sexual reproduction. So I have a pollinator garden. There are bees and butterflies and moths and wasps buzzing all around me right now, um, doing the work of pollinating these plants. And the whole purpose for an angiosperm is that it's going to make a flower and it has all of these flowering parts that allow for reproduction. And down at the bottom, it has something called a carpal, which is really just the receptacle that's going to create the seed or the fruit. So all you have to think about is apples. So apple trees have beautiful blossoms all over them. And as those blossoms develop, they move from bud to flower to producing all the pollen that those bees are going to cross pollinate. The wind is actually gonna to help too. And then once that process is done and that flower carpal has been pollinated or fertilized, all of these beautiful flower parts that we love so much, they're just gonna drop off. And once they drop off, it ain't so pretty to look at anymore. And really as ornamental gardeners, what we're thinking about all the time are these beautiful flowers. So then what happens is that carpal is gonna ripen into that yummy apple that we love. Now, when we're talking about edible gardening, that makes a ton of sense. But when we're talking about the flower garden, not so much, right? We wanna have that plant keep doing the thing that we love so much, which is making these gorgeous flowers. So I'm nestled in my garden here with lots of flowering plants and deadheads all around me. But before I tell you about deadheading, I'm going to tell you a little bit about tools. So tools for deadheading are not all that different than uh, pruning a rose or um, uh, pruning perennials. Um, basically with deadheading, what you're looking for, as always, my go-to is the bypass pruning shears. Um, you can do the big ones or the teeny tiny ones and for deadheading, the small ones often are really great. And the key with your bypass pruning shears in this particular situation is that you need the tip of the plant, uh, the tip of the cutting implement to be really, really sharp. Uh, often that's the part that dulls out early, so make sure that you sharpen the, the pruning shear. Now also, you can use perennial scissors. You can see how narrow and tiny the tips are. It helps you get into plants that are quite small. And then I also love these. These I call snips and they just have a, they're spring loaded. And so you just have to remember when you're going into the plant to go in to the plant with them closed, then open and cut. So these are also real fun. So that is your tools and a handy dandy little tool carrying case is always great because I can stuff four in there and have easy access to them. Now, not all plants will re-bloom. Some plants are going to bloom once and that's it. So many of your perennials, like this Baptisia that I have in front of me, as well as some of the shrubs I'm gonna show you, they're only gonna bloom once. So you're deadheading more for aesthetic. If you look at this Baptisia, it's, you know, I have it propped up against me, but you can see all of these past flowers. This was filled with these kind of pea shrub type flowers that were bright blue. This is also called false indigo, uh, Baptisia australis. And it creates these almost pea-like um, pods on the top, and they're actually quite heavy. And when you open them up, it's got little seeds inside, just the way you would open um, snap peas. The thing is, these get very heavy. These are gonna ripen into a, uh, like a dusty brown black color. And if you cut them off at that stage and go like this, they're like a rattle until they burst open and those seeds come flying through. They're absolutely gorgeous. The problem is that 
this Baptisia has completely splayed out all over the place because these are so heavy. And you can see this really beautiful dusty gray foliage on the plant. And actually that's what I want to see. I'm far into the garden so it's sort of a backdrop plant to all the other flowers. So deadheading this makes a lot of sense from an aesthetic standpoint. So the way you do that is you're going to choose your pruning implement and I'm going to choose my small bypass pruning shear and I'm going to look for an intersecting point. So let's see if I can make this so you can see it. So here is a long flower stalk. You can see how long this is. This bloomed from the tip all the way down this stalk down to this point. And so I can take this whole entire stalk down and what I'm going to do, if I can find it, is I'm going to look for a point where it intersects with some foliage. So let's see if I can make it so you can see this. So here's the flower stalk right here. Here's the intersecting foliage down below. So I'm going to go right down to where that intersects, cut it. Now this is left over, standing nice and tall. Let me get this out of the way so you can see. So you can see this foliage standing nice and tall. And look at the size of this. I mean, and it's got some real weight to it. So as soon as I take this big, heavy seed pod off, I'm lightening the load for the rest of the foliage, which is just gonna bounce up and be beautiful. And if some of it's a little bit too splayed out, now I can stake it very lightly with a bamboo stake and some twine and have this plant be a real showpiece in the background. So I'm gonna go through this plant and we'll do a little before and after. Okay, <laughs> it, it's like a full contact sport, uh, pruning a perennial that's this big. But what I'm hoping you can see is that now I've taken a whole bucket of uh, seed and foliage off of this plant. And now, you know, there's little bits of tip pruning that I might do just to make it become a shape that I like. Um, but now the plant is actually standing up on its own and I don't even think I need to stake it. All of that splaying down at the bottom just by pulling these stems up and taking the really heavy weight and a little bit of the extra foliage off. I actually have a nice plant that doesn't even need staking. And now you can see the Eupatorium, which is ready to pop behind it very easily. You can see the peony that's in front of it, which also has dead heads all over it that I'm gonna go through and prune off next. But this section of the garden is now cleaned and really quite beautiful and doesn't need any more work for me from the rest of the year.